Okay, so I never really do this, and it's really loud, so forgive me. Today's the episode you don't want to miss. Two of the greatest hands, and I'm not exaggerating, the greatest hands that I've ever played on this freaking poker vlog. And if I didn't record them, you wouldn't believe me, so thankfully I did. Get ready to enjoy what is the most ridiculous poker session I've ever played on this poker vlog to date. And also, happy birthday to me. Enjoy the video, guys. Welcome back everyone to another episode of Close to Broke. My name is Kieran and today we're going to be back at the Commerce Casino. It's a pleasure to have you get, you know, you folks in in the drive-in. I was thinking about everything we've come through, well over, nearing on 120 episodes, kind of a big deal. That's 108, uh, 20, minimum like 15 to 20 minute long episodes about my poker journey and my poker career. Uh, even though it is a small snippet in the grand scheme of my entire poker career, it's a big deal for what's happened today. Either way, today we're gonna be heading into the Commerce playing the 510 game that they usually got running. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Either way, I appreciate you guys always. Can't thank you guys enough. If you guys haven't had a chance, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We are nearing 20,000 beautiful subscribers. The c 2 Familia is only going up from here. I thank you guys all dearly and let's hop into today's beautiful session. So I think I've given away enough of how insane today's episode's gonna be. So let's hop right into the madness. In this very first hand, I find myself in the button with seven six of hearts. I decide to race at $30. A small blind makes a call. We're gonna off heads up to a flop that comes king, queen, nine with two diamonds and a club. With the action checked over to me, this is definitely gonna be a board that hits my range. Sure, it can hit my opponent's range. He's gonna have a lot of these Broadway call cards in his range as well as some more than likely middling pairs. The thing is, I'm gonna have all the kings, all the queens, all the tens, all the nines, all the jacks, all the aces, all the ace kings, you get it. I don't need to bore you with it. I decided to see bet here to $35. He pretty quickly makes a call and we're going off to a turn card that comes with five of hearts. Doesn't change a whole lot to our hand. We are now at seven high and can't improve in any fashion. But when the action checks over to me, I think it's about time that I go a little bit on the bigger side and decide to bet for some, you know, I bet out $100 to kind of see what my opponent is doing, and surprisingly, he calls pretty quickly. As we've talked about in the past, this is one of the biggest live tells in poker. For the most part, when a recreational player calls really fast, they are trying to imply or act or overextend themselves in some fashion, pretending like they have a strong hand. More than likely, that is the case that they don't have a strong hand, and they're just trying to pretend or make you feel like they do to prevent you from making an action that they're not happy with, which would be a big bet on the river or something like that. We're going off to a river card that comes with three of clubs. I decided to bet $160 after his check to me. I actually don't like this bet. I think that I should go a little bit larger. If I'm betting three streets for value, I think polarizing myself makes more sense. I can have queen nine, king queen, jack 10, ace king. I think all those hands can go pretty polar here. I don't have to worry about too much about two pairs when I don't get raised. And our opponent goes into the tank before eventually deciding on a call. He shows queen eight of spades after I show my seven high. Well, interesting to say the least. I think we put him directly on what he had. We did a good job of ranging him. We just did a pretty poor job of following through with a massive clip, massive bullet on the river. Either way, happy with our play and we get it. And you just got to applaud somebody when they make a good call. Moving along in the following hand, we're playing seven or eight handed at this point. I looked out at pocket fours under the gun and I decided to race at $30. Definitely going to be under our opening range here from under the gun. Considering that I'm here to get in the mix and I don't have a great deal of time today, why not open it up? The only thing I didn't realize was that the cutoff had a $10 post out there. So our $30 raise was pretty horrible. We should have at least gone $40 considering there is 10 extra dollars in the pot already. By the way, it does fall to that cutoff player who decides to make the call. Everyone else folds and we're going off to a flop that comes Jack 7-6 with two hearts and a club. The action on me against a specific player, I think we can be pretty comfortable double barreling. And if we have to put a third barrel in, we're either going to have to go really big against this OMC or just check give up because he's incapable of folding top here anyways. With the action on me, I decide to C-bit here for a pretty small sizing. And our opponent decides to pretty quickly make the call. We're going off to a turn card that comes a queen of clubs bringing a backdoor flush draw so there's two flush draws on board considering i don't block any of them and our opponent is again tight enough to fold a pretty reasonable flush draw 
not that we want that nonetheless the the key thing is that we just want to kind of get this pot over with and try to bluff him off of any of the equity he has either way with the action on me i decide to bet out here once again and this time that seems to do the trick our opponent does end up making the fold here luckily for us after a little moment of thinking and just like that we find ourselves in the positive well at least we're break even right one and one so far our big bluff earlier did not go through Working our way back to black, as we have found ourselves uh, accustomed to, but buckle up because this next hand is the greatest hand we play on the vlog today. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, because we are on for a ride. In this next hand, the cutoff decides to raise here to $35. I find myself in the big blind with a suited connector. Beautiful hand to defend with. I end up making the call here with 7-6 suited. And we're going heads up to a flop that comes 9-4 deuce all right not a horrible flop we have a gut shot to the nuts here otherwise again this is probably a board that favors my range check it over to our opponent who decides to down bid here to 25 dollars i decide to make the call here we're going off to a turn card that comes a beautiful 10 of spades we now increase to a plethora of outs as now we find ourselves with a gut shot straight draw as well as a flush draw with the action checked over to our opponent he decides to bet the size of the potter somewhere in the realm of it, $120 to go. Our opponent has shown the ability to make really big bets a couple hands before I saw him 3x a river bet here uh, with nobody knows as the opponent ended up making the fold. But in this case, I actually like taking over the reins of the hand. I think our although our opponent can definitely have pocket 10s or pocket 9s here, I'm just as often going to have pocket 5s, pocket deuces, top two pair and some random two pair holdings like maybe nine five suited if that's the case i'd be raising in this instance and i go ahead and do so i make it 350 dollars to go and our opponent goes into the tank after quite a bit of thinking our opponent looks me dead in the eyes to see my reaction and decides to peel back his original bet and then complete a call interesting i think this is a really solid player a really good pro and he's obviously trying to get a little bit of a live tell on me I'm doing my best to not give anything away, but you know, I'm only human. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Anyways, we're going off to a river card looking to get bailed out that comes the queen of diamonds. All right, so we don't get there, but it's never stopped me before. I'm sitting with around $930 or $950 in my stack. And as we mentioned plenty of times, I'm not scared to put it in the middle. The one thing I have to remind myself is that although I don't have a maid hand here, there's going to be a ton of times on this river I end up and I do have a made hand. Whether it's pocket fives, pocket deuces, top two pair, middle two pair. There's going to be instances where I will have the best hand or even some kind of random backdoor flush draw that turn into a straight. And I think it's my best option here to just go for gusto. I have about 950 in my stack as we mentioned and I decide to go all in. Our opponent goes deep into the tank. And actually takes a hundred dollar chip and moves it over to the top of his chips here. Unfortunately, because I'm so set and focused on one spot of the table, I have a little bit of a jerk reaction towards that because I thought he was calling. And whenever somebody calls, I always immediately table my hand, whether it's a good hand or a bad hand. Okay, don't worry. I don't table my hand here, but there is a little bit of a jerk reaction. I think that was something he was looking to get out of me. Not that it's an angle. There's nothing bad. I don't think he was doing anything malicious, but... I've definitely seen this before. Really, really good players, really solid pros, old school pros have the ability to get little reads like this out of you. Whether that's good or bad for me, I don't know yet. Our opponent is in the tank several minutes after this. Things go on. I'm biting my tongue here, praying, hoping that this guy can let whatever he has go. Maybe he has pocket aces. Maybe he has some kind of random ace high. Maybe he has kings. Who knows? The one thing I do know is that I need a fold. After a very long deliberation, our opponent decides to make the fold. Seven high. Never looks so good. One of the most amazing bluffs. One of the premier bluffs you've seen on my channel. It's one thing to do the play. It's another thing to really go through with it. Very satisfied with the outcome. Either way, whether he called or he folded didn't matter to me. I was put in a spot where I think the right thing was to do was to jam. 
It's like so it. sick to have an over over bet jam on the river with seven high. It now protects me for the next infinite times when I do that with a strong hand. Either way, we're just getting started in today's episode. If you thought that hand was crazy, buckle up because the next couple hands are something you won't ever forget. Well, as you can only imagine, right after that hand, that one really got me. That was a pretty nutty one. Literally, the next shuffle or the shuffle right after that, I don't even have a chance to get my camera out for this hand as I stopped the recording for the previous hand, as you might understand. We've got a pretty interesting one. At this point, we are on the button and we look down at king five of diamonds. I decided to raise you to $30. Only the big blind makes a call. We're going off to a flop. There comes queen five deuce rainbow. The action checked over to me. This is a really nice hand to just check back with. We have the second nut mill pair kicker thing. I think you guys get what I'm saying. So there's no reason to bloat the size of the pot. Feels like this is a hand we can get two streets of value or maybe even one street of value. We'll see how the run out comes or even allow my opponent to bluff at it. Either way, we check it back and the turn card comes with seven of hearts. Does bring a backdoor flush draw. At this point, our opponent decides to lead for 40 bucks. Our opponent can have a plethora of hands here, 6-4 suited, 4-3, random holdings like such. So I think it'd be best to just make the call here. We don't have to be too worried, at least not at this juncture. And we're going off to a river card that comes the deuce of clubs. So now pairs the board here, which is awesome. I feel more comfortable in my hand here, even more so when the opponent checks over to me. Now the question becomes... Uh, with the action checked over to me, I feel very confident in stating that I don't think my opponent has a queen here. And if that's the case, I think we can honestly go for some really thin value. Maybe it's goofy to some people, maybe it's not, but in my eyes, I think we can definitely get called by hands like 5-6 or any other middling pair that doesn't contain a 7. Anyways, I decide to bet here for $95 and our opponent thinks about it for a brief moment before deciding on a call. We show our hand and it is in fact good. Always feels good to go for some really thin value there. I assume we got called by a worse five or some random non-believing ace highs. Either way, really happy with that outcome. We're going to go ahead and move on to the craziest hand that has ever happened in this poker vlog. I am so excited to break this one down. So by this point, some time has passed and you may be asking yourself, hey, Kieran, what really has happened? Well, not a whole lot. Maybe half an hour has passed. Like I said, since the last hand, not too much to report. In this next hand, I look down at Ace Queen Offsuit Premium from early position. I decided to make it thirty dollars to go. And the cutoff, who had just three bet in the previous hand and got four bet and had to fold, is a young Japanese pro, and he decides to three bet once again, relentless with the aggression to ninety dollars. Folds back to me. Although a four bet is delicious, and I'd love that. Out of position, seems like just calling here is an okay option as well. I go ahead and do that, and we're going off to a flop that comes 10-9-3 with two hearts and a spade. I check over the action to my opponent, expecting him to more than likely check this back here. I feel like aces, kings would always be checking in this spot, or should be very often. I have all the tens, all the nines in my range. It's very unlikely for my opponent to have any of those holdings. I don't see those holdings rebetting ever against early position especially not from a professional or a solid players you know range and what's interesting to me is that he decides to bet a very large sizing of 120 dollars that's over 60 60 ish percent of the you know the pot which again is fairly large for a c bet in a three bet pot i'm not buying what he's selling at this point so i'm gonna go ahead and make the call here float with an ace high we do have some good backdoor equity as well as overs and there's a good chance that my hand might still be good we're going off to a turn card that comes the four of diamonds. Doesn't change a whole lot here. If I was good on the flop, I'm probably good on the turn. I decide to check it over to my opponent once again when he decides to bet $275. All right, at this point, things are getting really fishy, really smelly. All right, maybe that's just myself getting ahead of myself and considering calling with a bad hand. But more than likely, I just kind of don't get what he's repping. Once again, I just don't see aces or kings c-betting the flop and betting the turn after being called. But again, wouldn't be the craziest thing ever. It feels not awfully ridiculous. It just doesn't feel standard, I guess, is the word I'm using. Either way, I can still be good at some, you know, some chance of the time. So 
I decide to make the call here. Maybe you guys like it, maybe you don't, but that's why this is your favorite segment of the day as it is the chat pro hand of the day. Either way, we're going to a river card that comes the eight of spades. Okay, the flush draw bricks out, which is kind of important to note. And beyond that, the only draw that gets in is six, seven, if he three bet me with that, which I actually can see him betting two streets with as it is seven high. And also maybe queen jack suited. The one thing we do have to notice, because we do block Queen Jack of Hearts, there's only three combinations of that specific value holding left in the deck. Either way, with only four more combinations of 7-6 suited, I check over to my opponent and we've built a pretty reasonable value holding range for my opponent if he decides to bet. The unthinkable happens here as my opponent decides to bet over the size of the pot. $1,000 to go. Well, as you guys can imagine, my heart is deep in my chest at this point. I feel like there's a frog. I feel like there's a horse in my throat. I don't know how to feel about it. I thought, I mean, I would have bet all of the money in the world that I was good in this spot. Sometimes you have a live read, and I definitely have one in this instance. But even then, that live read that you have can actually go against you. Sometimes it's because somebody is so strong, they can't even believe their own luck. Either way, although I don't like doing this often, I'd like to paint the picture that's going on directly in my mind at the moment in game. As we've talked about, we've given them a reasonable seven combinations of nutted holdings. So we have three combos of queen jack suited and four combos of seven six suited. Two hands that I think can go for three barrels of value here. Sure, we can give some combinations of eight nine or nine ten suited. You can't discount those completely. But again, it's less likely as those cards are out on the felt. So, again, let's not go down a random rabbit hole. Let me give you guys what I think my opponent can have for bluffs here. Ace Jack of Hearts. Ace X of Hearts for that matter. King Queen Suited. King Queen Offsuit. And King Jack of Hearts. Those are all very credible holdings that our opponent can hold. The problem, as you guys do know, is I do hold a Queen... So there is just the like less likelihood for him to have king queen, but it's also less likely for him to have queen jack, as we've already stated. Anyways, after the longest tank I think I've had in live poker again to date, I make the hero call with ace freaking high. My opponent murmurs under his breath, and I can't understand, and he flips over two pink cards. My throat is in shambles at this point i'm almost shaking i take off my headphone my earphone and i hear him say it again king high king high king high oh my goodness i try to hold my composure very often and i'm shaking at this moment i have goosebumps retelling the story and seeing it here in the video in front of you i just made a hero call with ace high for an overbet size on the river, and I was right. And I was dead right. I put him on his exact holding. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. I even give a little fist bump, man. I'm only human. That was a big deal to me. Poker's been rough, and to be going with my gut, to have the live read, to have the range advantage, to put all this crap together and make a really sick call. Let's go! Let's freaking go! Oh my goodness. Chat pro hand of the day? What? Did I just call with ace high? What? Oh my gosh, that was incredible. As you guys heard on the commentary and I write down in my notes, kind of I'm deducing what my opponent's range would look like on that river spot. And it's very narrow and condensed, especially when my opponent goes over the size of the pot. I'm so freaking proud of myself, man. I did it. Call me whatever you want. I just freaking bred that dude's soul. And I put one and one together, and I just made a sick call, and I'm really proud of myself. Anyways, we're gonna hop back in there. I have probably another 30 minutes to play, because 10.30 reservations with the misses, where we'll be doing the wrap of, of today's episode, talk about the numbers at a restaurant. So let's hop back in there, finish out the session, and have a good time. See you guys in a bit. Okay, as you guys saw there, there's a lot to decompress. Luckily, we've went outside. You guys saw me feel a little better. We've got some more hands to get to, so let's get into it. 
Middle position, OMC decides to make it $35. I'm in the big blind with Ace, Four of Hearts. I decide to make the call pretty standard, and we're going off to a flop that comes Queen, Jack, Five, with two spades and a heart. We flop ourselves a double back door draw here. Check it over to my opponent with every intention on floating here. Luckily, it doesn't come to that as my opponent pretty quickly decides to make the check back. We're going off to a turn card that comes the King of Hearts. Nice. We pick up the two back doors that we were looking for, actually. Well, two of the three. We pick up the back door straight draw as well as the back door nut flush draw. With the action starting off on me, I think this is a great spot to go pot pot. Although this is an opponent that is an OMC variety, I feel like really putting the pressure on here, I can get him to fold some pretty decent holdings. I decide to bet $65, setting up for around a $250 bet, $300 bet on the river if he happens to call to really put him to the test. Luckily, it won't need to come to that. We won't need to go to the streets. Our opponent pretty quickly decides to throw it into the muck. I guess sometimes it's not that hard to play against the OMCs. Just bet when you don't got it, and if they keep calling, you maybe decide to just give up. Either way, we're going to go over this very last night of the session, let's, so let's hop right into it. By this point of the session, I am right about to rack up. I'm actually going to pick up the racks, or on the way to do that. When we pick up this next hand, so for that reason, there is no video. So just bear with me as we go to recount the story. We look down at 10 and 9 of clubs here from middle position. I decided to raise here to $40 as there is a late position post. Once again, for somebody that missed the blinds, late position and big blind decide to make the call. We're going off to a flop that comes ace 10 forward, two spades and a club. Action checks over to the late position player who decides to bet $50. With the action on me, I decide to make the call here. We flop middle pair in a back door. Seems fine to just call. We're going to have to return card that comes the eight of diamonds with the action checked over to our opponent. I suspect that he continue betting with his aces and check back with his random stuff. Seems like the random stuff is on the agenda as he makes a check back and we're going off to a river card that comes a five of diamonds. This is an interesting situation when the flush draw breaks out and our opponent can have a flush draw, but I do something bad here, which is probably my least favorite thing we did in all session. And I put a, bl a blocker bet out for $25. The reason I don't like it is I let my opponent off at a cheaper price here. I let him get away from making a bluff at the hand with his missed clubs or his missed spades, excuse me. And I think that's the biggest problem with it. By checking over to my opponent, I can allow him to sometimes value on himself, maybe betting some kind of random middle pair. Moreover, the likelihood is that he's going to bluff with his random missed straight draws and his random bricked out flush draws. When I block bet like this, I just let him get away for cheap. And that's the error. He ends up laying it down. Obviously, he had some kind of bluff there, or he would have at least thought about bluffing on the river. Either way, it seems like that's going to bring our session to an end. At this point, we've got a dinner to attend. The missus is waiting for me at a local restaurant, and I'm very excited. And just like that, we're going to throw it over to me in person and see how we're doing at dinner. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's quickly talk about the session. Sorry if the music's a little loud in the background. We're currently at a restaurant here in downtown LA. Today's session, as you guys saw, was unreal. It felt like something out of a movie. An insane bluff with seven high and an even more ridiculous call with ace high. So I'm really happy about that. It feels good when you're right. We've been running kind of all right and playing kind of bad. And today, you know, maybe some people don't like it, but man, it feels so good to make an insane call like that especially on the vlog with the video it was all there the whole table was blown away even the dealer was like wait what either way we were into today's game for 1900 and out for 34 75 which is a profit of just shy of 1600 we played for like an hour and a half we had to run to get to this dinner for my birthday with stephanie so i'm gonna go back to enjoying dinner we're wrapping up here I'm going to sign off here. I'm going to thank you guys dearly for continuing to support the videos. If you guys haven't already, we're super close to 20k subs. Uh, that'd be a wonderful birthday present. I don't know how we're going to do it, but it'd be sick if we can get it. Uh, otherwise, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay happy, stay healthy. More importantly, run good at the tables, y'all. Deuces. Thank you so much.